Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one of a series of videos involving cellular reproduction. This video will provide an overview of meiosis, the means by which gametes are produced during sexual reproduction in humans. The picture on the bottom of this slide exhibits meiosis. The eight different stages of meiosis, as well as important events that occur during them, will be the emphasis of this video. Most of this video will assume that you are familiar with the stages of mitosis and how they occur specifically. Meiosis, like mitosis, is the means by which the nucleus of a cell divides. Instead of producing somatic cells, such as skin cells, muscle cells, or stomach cells, as in mitosis, gametes are produced during meiosis. Gametes are sex cells, such as sperm and egg cells, that are used for sexual reproduction. This sexual reproduction is used to produce new offspring in organisms such as humans. Meiosis contains the same stages as mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, but these steps occur in significantly different ways. Meiosis also involves going through all these same stages twice, as the nucleus divides two times. These two divisions of the nucleus are entitled meiosis I and meiosis II. Each of these stages, as well as their steps, will be described throughout the rest of this video. Before cells undergo meiosis, they go through the same interphase stages as mitosis, doubling their DNA, growing in size, and producing more organelles. The first stage of meiosis is prophase I. During this phase, DNA condenses into chromosomes and the nuclear envelope disappears, just like you'd find in mitosis. One thing that is significantly different in meiosis than mitosis is how chromosomes are arranged during prophase. During prophase one of meiosis, chromosomes arrange themselves as homologous pairs. What this means is that the chromosomes of the same size, the two chromosome number sevens, for example, line up next to each other. The process by which they pair up is called synapsis, and the two chromosomes next to each other are referred to as a tetrad. If you have any trouble remembering the word tetrad, something might help. The prefix tetra means four. When you play Tetris, you try to st strategically position four block structures. Within a tetrad, there are four chromatid, all placed in close proximity. The reason that the arrangement of chromosomes is important is because when a tetrad forms during prophase one of meiosis, crossing over occurs. One chromosome literally crosses over its homologous pair, and genetic information between the two can be swapped, as you see in the picture to the right. This is important because it means that every single offspring that are produced can be different from others. Producing diverse offspring is one of the reasons that organisms bother to reproduce sexually. During metaphase one of meiosis, spindle fibers attach to chromosomes and centrosomes, pulling them into two lines. Chromosomes match up as homologous pairs, chromosome one with the other chromosome one, chromosome 15 with its homologous pair. Metaphase 1 is significantly different than that of metaphase and mitosis, where there is only one line of chromosomes along the center of the cell. During metaphase 1 of meiosis, chromosomes arrange themselves as homologous pairs, as described in the previous slides. While both of these chromosomes contain the same genes, they contain different information within those genes. The side of the cell that each of these chromosomes ends up on is randomly determined. What this means is that chromosomes will randomly end up in different cells. The picture on this slide shows two potential ways that chromosomes could be arranged and the different possible outcomes of meiosis I. This random ordering is referred to as independent assortment. Just like crossing over, independent assortment provides another way to increase diversity in offspring. Since humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, the likelihood of one parent passing out in the same 23 chromosomes to their offspring would be like flipping a coin 23 times and ending up with 23 heads in a row. The probability of doing so could be expressed mathematically as 2 to the 23rd power, which is about 1 in 8,388,608. When you take into consideration these incredibly long odds, in addition to the endless possibilities with crossing over, there is virtually no chance that two humans could be born with the exact same genetic information, unless they were identical twins. During anaphase one of meiosis, entire chromosomes are pulled away from one another towards centrioles. This differs from anaphase of mitosis, where chromatid are pulled apart from one another. 
Finally, the chromosomes gather along the centrosomes and the nuclear envelope is reformed. Since each chromosome, containing different information, is pulled towards different cells, half of the genetic information is lost from each of the cells during telophase 1 of meiosis. At this point in meiosis, cells are referred to as haploid. After the first nuclear division is complete in meiosis, the division of the cytoplasm occurs, splitting the rest of the cellular components in half. This occurs during a process referred to as cytokinesis. After cytokinesis 1 of meiosis, the two newly formed cells go directly into prophase 2 of meiosis 2. There is not a pause, nor is there any form of interphase that takes place between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. The phases of meiosis 2 will be described only briefly, as they are nearly identical to those phases found in mitosis. The only real difference is that you would start with half of the typical number of chromosomes for an organism. During prophase 2 of meiosis, the nuclear envelope of both the newly formed cells disappear. During metaphase 2 of meiosis, spindle fibers pull at chromosomes and centrosomes, causing each of the two newly created cells to form one line of chromosomes along the center of the cell. During anaphase 2 of meiosis, chromatid are pulled apart from one another towards the centrosomes. Finally, during telophase 2, chromatid are gathered at the centrosomes and the nuclear envelope begins to reappear. Immediately after the reformation of the nuclear envelopes, the rest of the cell divides in its second round of cytokinesis. The final product, four haploid daughter cells. While four cells are produced during meiosis, the final products are a little bit different in males and females. The picture to the right shows how each of these processes occur. Males produce sperm in a process called spermatogenesis. The suffix genesis means creation of, and sperm are produced, so the scientific term makes quite a bit of sense. Since males only contribute DNA and not cell parts to their offspring, each of these four cells can be used for fertilization. Females produce eggs in a process called oogenesis. Again, the suffix genesis still means creation of, and oa refers to the scientific name of egg cells, which are oocytes. Females contribute all of the cell parts or organelles, so only one of the four cells that are produced during this process are capable of producing offspring. While the genetic material is split evenly, the cytoplasm is not for female gametes during this process. One of the cells ends up with the vast majority of the cell parts, while the other three end up with very little. The three smaller cells are not capable of forming offspring and are referred to as polar bodies. Mitosis and meiosis are two very important forms of cell reproduction that occur in organisms such as humans. They serve very different functions and have some important distinctions, but consist of the same basic steps. The picture on this slide shows, overall, how these two processes compare and how they differ. That is the end of this video describing meiosis. If you are interested in learning about any other topics relating to cellular reproduction or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.